Good morning and happy new year, new beginnings family. We are starting the year off with a bang. We've got a lot going on, so sit tight and listen to our announcements. This Saturday at 5 p.m., we begin with The Chosen, and then afterwards will be dinner and discussion following around 6 p.m. The following week is going to be Starry Night on that Saturday, January 14th at 5 p.m. That's going to give us some stargazing with campfire and hot cocoa and cookies. The following weekend, January 22nd at 12 p.m., we're going to have our baptism at the Oneida YMCA. If you'd like to be baptized, please get in touch with Samantha before that. And then the following weekend, we're going to close out January on the 29th at 11 a.m. with our annual meeting. So lots of things going on to kick off 2023. Stand up and sing.
He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery for sight of the blind, to set the opposed free to proclaim that year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began to, by saying to them, Today the scriptures fulfilled in your hearing. Luke 4, 16-21 Well, Happy New Year to you. I hope you had a great New Year's Eve and up this morning, just uh, raring to get after it. <laughs> Today, uh, I'd like to share with you a North Point Ministries message about possibility. And um, why, why would I talk about possibilities uh, today? Well, because <clears throat> we're done with last year, 2022, and we're, we're beginning a whole new year, 2023. And, and what kind of year is it going to be? Some people look at last year and it, last year's influencing their view of this coming year. My wife, Linda, is going to be getting surgery on the 4th of January. It's back surgery. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm looking towards that surgery with a little trepidation based upon the idea in 2022. Last year, it's been proven time and time again that she's pretty fragile as far as her, um, her physical health is concerned. So I'm looking at that surgery with some, some trepidation. But... <clears throat> Other people are looking to the new year with all kinds of uh, ideas of what is possible. They're reaching out to see what new things could be possible. Linda actually, um, this is elective surgery. She elected to have this multi-level back surgery in order to try to offer her the possibility of being able to, to walk with on a cane or um, a, a walker or anything. So. There are some people who are looking at last year and it's influencing this year and other people who are looking at this year and they're just getting after it as far as <clears throat> what the possibilities are. You know, <clears throat> opportunities come with crisis. They're wrapped in crisis and we're going to have plenty of crises and we're going to have plenty of opportunities in this coming year. That's why our challenge is to, to see the possibilities of this new year and what it holds for us. But we need to see that clearly, right? I mean, to, be a, to, to look at your world through rose-colored glasses really doesn't give you a clear depiction of what the world is all about. So how do we accurately look at this coming year's possibilities? Well, it's important to really be self-aware. It begins with self-awareness. Some people are optimists. These are the people who love to dream about what could be. The optimist says, this is my year to, I don't know, uh, go back to school and get a degree. This is my year to start out a new business. This is my year to, to recreate me to get in shape, do something along those lines, maybe a new career or something along those lines. Dreams are necessary. It's necessary for improvement. Hmm. It's necessary for hope. But you need a plan to get there. Um, Arthur Miller wrote this play called Death of a Salesman. It's a classic because I think it strikes a lot of people where they live. Willie Loman is an is a aging salesman who's pretty much had very few wins in his life. A lot of failures, but he's a dreamer. And he's dreaming of being a successful salesman who is appreciated and loved by so many people. And he projects that onto his sons, even in the face of reality where they're 
they're they're struggling as far as just trying to make ends meet, not succeeding. You need to have a plan. If you're going to be an optimist who looks at everything as a possibility, you need to have a plan to make it happen. Other people are, are realists. The realist thinks about how to achieve the, the plans, of the, the possibilities of the optimist. The, the realists actually count the cost of what is possible. They ask the question, do I have enough money to go back to school? And if I don't have enough money, how much am I going to be able to take out in student loans? And, and can I pay those student loans back to get that degree? Do I have the resources to be able to start up a new business? Or say I, I get into shape, get, uh, you know, lose weight in this new year. Can I keep it off? The realist questions actually are good because they help us to build and achieve a, a strategy that, that allows us to gain those possibilities. But the realist can turn into a pessimist when the realist loses belief in the possibility, the power of possibility, I should say. When the realist loses the hope in the possible, they become a pessimist. So where does one find the balance between optimism and realism? Well, I'd like to offer you a, an analogy um, with the citizenship as far as countries are concerned. We, <clears throat> we are citizens of the United States. I, at least I know I'm a citizen of the United States. Maybe somebody has dual citizenship or a citizen in another country. But anyways, I'm a citizen of the United States. Let's put, keep it in the first person. But I like to go to Canada. Linda and I are actually going to be going to this little uh, town called Niagara on the Lake. It's right on Lake Ontario. Um, we've gone there a number of times in the past when we lived in western New York. Niagara on the Lake is actually in Canada. So I'm a citizen of the United States, but frequently I've taken trips to Canada. Well, how we balance optimism and realism is that we have to be a citizen of optimism, the country of optimism, the land of optimism, because that allows us to be able to see the possibilities. But then when we see the op uh, possibilities, we have to take that, that trip and visit the land of the country of, of realism to be able to, to ask the questions, how are we going to develop a plan to make that happen? So being citizens of the country of optimism, we see the possibility. And a good question to ask yourself is, what's possible for this year of 2023? What is possible? Perhaps it's, it's the year you get out of debt. You've got, you get rid of all of your mortgage, you get rid of all of your credit card uh, debt. You're able to start putting money away to build up a nest egg for retirement. You're, you're, uh, you're starting to not have to worry about how, am I, how are you going to uh, make ends meet to be able to pay the bills that you got. You're developing financial freedom. Maybe this is the year for that. Maybe this is the year you mend your marriage. You've had this, this relationship and it's not, you're not ready for divorce, but on the flip side, you've kind of grown apart as the years have gone on. You're tending to the kids, you've got your career and you're just kind of growing apart. Maybe this is the year you, you, you reconnect with your spouse. Maybe this is the year you, you get in shape. You uh, get stronger as far as your, your, your body is concerned. Or maybe this is the year in which you gain health emotionally. You've battled with depression and, and anxiety in the pandemic in the most recent years. And, and maybe this is the year that you gain health. Or maybe this is the year in which you get closer to Jesus based upon the idea of reading through the Bible in a year. I don't know. Maybe that's the year. 
the really good question to ask is, which of these do you believe is possible for you this year? But I offer you a better question to ask, and that is, what does God think is possible in 2023? It's a better question to ask because everything's possible with God, but not everything is possible just with ourselves. That actually is biblical. Jesus actually said that. In the story recorded in Matthew's Gospel in the 19th chapter, you have this, this young man who goes to Jesus. And he asks Jesus, what do I need to do to gain eternal life? And Jesus says, you know the commandments. Have you kept them? And the young man says, yes, yeah, since I've been a kid. Jesus looks at him, he studies him for a second, and he says, one thing you need to do. If you want to be complete, if you want to be perfect, if you want to gain what is possible for your life, go sell everything. Give it to the poor and come follow me. And with that, the man, the man walked away sad because he had a lot of possessions. He had a lot of wealth. And then Jesus went on to say how hard it is for rich people to gain the kingdom of heaven. It's easier for a camel to, to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to gain the kingdom of heaven. Now, Jesus' disciples reacted to this, and we find their reaction in Matthew 19, 25, and 26. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. What's impossible for you and me alone, trying to gut it out, is more than possible when we have a relationship with Jesus and his help in our life. So what are the possibilities? Well, I offer to you that the possibilities start with the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit would be those qualities, those attributes, those things that, that we, we express in our life based upon the influence of Jesus' Spirit in our, in our life. The Apostle Paul wrote about these things in, in uh, his letters to the Galatian churches in the fifth chapter in the 22nd and 23rd verses. Let me read it for you. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Why does what is possible begin with the fruit of the Spirit? Well, because every, every New Year's resolution that we would make begins with the heart, with our own heart. It, it's really a heart-driven thing. See, the, the human heart is not necessarily the instrument that beats blood around our circulatory system. The human heart, when in, in the biblical vernacular, is that place in our being that we hold our emotions and our attitudes. It's the place where we, we perceive the world and we make decisions about the world based upon those perceptions of our heart. The resolutions that we make on New Year's Eve, they might be well-intentioned, but many times they just don't have the wherewithal in our heart to back those up. Let me give you examples, okay? So if you um, <clears throat> want financial freedom, if you want to pay off all your debts, you're going to need the, the spiritual fruit of self-control to stop spending. If you want to mend your marriage and reconnect with your spouse, you need the spirit, uh, the, the fruit of the spirit of love. If you want to heal, your anxiety, you need the fruit of the spirit of peace. If you want to heal your depression, you need the fruit of the spirit of joy, which is not circumstantial. There's just this joy that wells up inside of our heart. You see, <clears throat> each one of these things 
are driven by the fruit of the Spirit that makes it possible through the help of Jesus, not just through our gutting it out and trying harder in a duty thing. And so many times what we try to do is we try to improve ourselves all of a sudden really fast. And that doesn't work. So it's best as far as trying to take it one thing at a time. So how do you determine, once again, when we think about what is possible for this coming year, how do we determine which fruit we seek after, we focus on, in order to try and gain that resolution that we might have, we'll see what is possible that would stem from that fruit? Well, I would submit to you, ask somebody who's especially close to you, who knows you, ask them, out of these fruits of the Spirit, which would you want me to have? Which one do you think would be best for me to have? And then go with that and make your resolutions based upon that. See, it's all about focusing on a relationship with Jesus rather than just duty. Possibilities abound when we focus on a relationship rather than our religious duty to Jesus, and that's our takeaway. As far as next steps are concerned, once again, we offer you four. These might be yours, they might not be yours, but I'll go through them anyways. Return next week, we're gonna begin a brand new teaching series called To Gather. It's a series about the importance of small groups in our, in our walk with Jesus. Second, uh, commit to live in the land of possibility while visiting the land of reality. Be able to get that, that appropriate uh, balance between the two of them. Commit to ask those closest to you what fruit of the Spirit would be best for you to focus on. And then last, commit to believe in 2023. That's, this is going to be your breakthrough year in fill in the blank. I don't know which one it might be for you, but I know there, there is a breakthrough in your future when you focus on your relationship with Jesus. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks because you, you're the one who has allowed your spirit to dwell with us and to influence us. Help us to be able to hear your spirit's voice in our hearts, in our minds, and to follow closely so that we might gain what is possible through that relationship with you and your help in our lives, not just what we can gut out and try to do our best with. Help us, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. I want to encourage you in the area of tithes and offerings this morning by asking you the question, did you ever wonder how we're able to be in a church like this and, and watch services online? It's because people that came before us were faithful in giving of their tithes and offerings and of their abilities to God. Um, they are inspirations and were inspirations to us even today on how we give. Um, my wife's father is a retired pastor who lives in Buffalo and he probably went through more building campaigns and capital campaigns than anybody that I know. And they were successful because not only did he, uh, was he faithful to God in giving, but his people were faithful in God in giving. Um, and it's so important that those kind of uh, demonstrations of love and giving uh, inspire us. Even today, uh, my father-in-law just recently had to sell some, some things that were very, very important to him. And his first thought was, I have to give my tithe to God. And he chose to support this church from Buffalo, a place he doesn't even get to go to because he knows that supporting God by our tithes and offerings is important. So it's the things that we do today as, as Christians and our giving that will inspire the generations to come. There's a song um, by Steve Green that talks about that giving generationally and how important it is. I just want to read a couple words to you. And it sounds like this. It says, may the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe, and the lives we live inspire them to obey. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. That's, that's the key to all this. The ones that come behind us find us faithful in giving. 
I hope that you will join me this morning in giving of your tithes and offerings, and there's way to do, to, ways to do that. We'll look at the slide as it comes up, but join me as we give this morning. God bless. joining our service the first of the year happy new year join us next week don't forget to like and share the service on facebook and remember next week we'll be back to our live services again